Hi, I'm Snow, and this is Gas and Go. All right, welcome to another episode of Gas and Go with Snow. Once again, we are here at the Electrify Expo in Long Beach. And one of the cars that the Wheeling Welshman and I came across was this Corvair. All right, thanks for taking the time to do this. What year is this? And where did you get it? So this car is a 1962 Chevrolet Corvair. Uh, it started its life, at least for us, off of eBay, of all places. We uh, we don't like doing paint or interior too much, so right. we wanted to find something that was already somewhat complete. And uh, the, we actually worked for General Motors during the day, and they had okay. originally built this car back in the 60s and called it the Electrovair 2. You, okay. can, you can Google it, there's YouTube videos on it, and all that good stuff that's out there. But it was kind of my gateway drug of a car yeah. for coming into the EV world, because back in 66, it had 80 miles of electric range, which right. what the Nissan Leaf have in 2010. 80 miles. Okay. okay. So right. it was kind of like uh, I wanted to build my own. So that's exactly what we did. About two years of research to get to this point where right. we did uh, research on what motor. Uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that it still had a manual transmission. That was kind of okay. a big thing for me that you don't always see necessarily with an EVs today. Yeah. Uh, well, I, like, I definitely want to talk yeah. about the, the the transmission. Yeah. But let's start right here. All right. I noticed, man, this is really deep set in there. And originally the Corvair was a rear engine car, right? But what do you have here? What's the running gear? And what are all these cables we see on top? All right. Brief explanation. So what we're looking at is a Hyper 9 with an SME controller. You have your DC coming in from the battery, and then you have your three, three phases going out to be able to spin the motor. Yep. What kind of horsepower and torque numbers are you getting out of this Hyper 9? Uh, horsepower is kind of relative on this guy. I would say around the 100-ish mark, but the torque is okay. about 173, 200 foot-pounds, somewhere in that okay. ballpark. And now, what would the original 62 Corvair had come with? Oh, less than this, substantially. I would guess in the neighborhood of 80 to 110 maximum, okay. somewhere in that ballpark. All right. Well, I have a soft spot for everything 1962. I drive a 1962 Chevrolet Impala, and it is the same color scheme right I have the white and the red love these cars one of the things I noticed here is you kept the original louvers on the trunk right yeah so why did you do that so the Hyper 9 by itself is air cooled and I mean who doesn't love kind of the concept of the, you know, the cool louvers on the back of the, of the hood it yeah. just looks good and in order to keep the airflow, to be able to keep the motor cool, you can see it's shaped like a giant aluminum heat sink. That's basically yeah. all it is. So we got air to be able to force in itself and keep that motor cool as we're going down the road. All right, I like it. And I noticed you got opening at the bottom, so if you did get any water in here, drain right down and go right out of the car. Yep, we could take a garden hose in here if we wanted to. It's an industrial type motor. Yeah. There's nothing back here we're gonna hurt. All right, I like it. Well, let's go, let's talk about the inside. Now, I noticed the interior looks very stock right down to the shifter. So can you explain to me how is an electric motor using a transmission? So it's, it's, it's real simple when you sit back and look at it. An electric motor or gas motor, all it does is rotate a shaft for us, right? Right. And essentially that's all this is doing in this instance. We have an electric motor rotating a clutch assembly that's connected to the actual yeah. manual transmission. Okay. So we're able to utilize the actual torque that the motor can produce. That's a pretty right. small yeah. amount in comparison and actually balance it throughout its torque curves to the different gears that we have. But and now speaking of the different gears, how many gears do you go through? Do you use all four? Do you use two? Do you use one? Great question. So because of the torque that this thing's produced, first and second gear in this thing are essentially useless. I would imagine, now you correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just guessing here. But I'm guessing you put that thing in first and get it, it'll just light them up and never get traction. That's all it does, that's <laughs> all it does. No, we, we, use, we use second gear if I've got four people in here and we need to get up a hill. Otherwise, it's third all day and then fourth on the freeway. Okay, now when you say fourth on the freeway. Once you get this thing rolling, is it just like a regular ICE vehicle? You're mm, next clutch, shift the fourth, let out on the clutch, and just keep driving. Yep, that's exactly it. It still has a fully mechanical clutch like it left the factory with in 62. Wow, I like the whole concept. All right, let's go check out under the hood and we're going to wrap this up. All right, what do we have for this box? What are we looking at? So the box that we have here is actually from my friend Brandon. His company out there, Amper Volt, over on the East Coast, builds these really cool modular enclosures to okay. be able to take Tesla Model S modules. Okay. They're kind of like a pizza oven, and because yeah. they're built like little suitcase drawers. Right. So this made it so that we could structurally make those batteries seem within the case of the actual front of the car. Yeah. Now, is this fairly watertight? 
Uh, somewhat. The water resistance? Yeah, water resistance. Let's okay. call it that. I'm not putting a garden hose up under here. Right. Okay. <laughs> and how many modules do you have here? Five modules. Five, five of the 5.3. Five modules. Okay. And how much is that? Uh, roughly 25, 26 kilowatt hours. Okay. And right. we get about three miles, four miles per kilowatt hour. Okay. Now, what total range, what's the max you've driven this car? Uh, the max I've driven this on a single charge is about 110 miles. And that's pretty good for that. That's yeah, it gets us to the ocean. That's all yeah. I like. It gets us from the Inland Empire out here to the water. We get to plug in one of the free chargers for the day, hang out at the beach, and go home. I like exactly it. what we needed. And now I noticed you got a couple other things up here. Um, I don't see any uh, electronics under here. So are we using manual brakes? It's a pretty small car, but so I do have manual brakes on here, but I do have a pressure transducer on the other side of that line. So this okay. has full regenerative braking. Ah, uh, so you're using the regen. I yeah. like it. And then what's the big orange plug? Big orange plug is one of my favorite things out there. Probably one of the more expensive parts of the stuff that goes in line with the electrical, but it's called okay. an MSD or manual service disconnect. Okay. And it makes it so that anybody that's working on this car can basically pull the latch off of that plug and disable the entire high voltage of this vehicle. All right. For those of you who may not understand that, to disable the vehicle while you're working on it or doing maintenance or whatever is extremely important. That's a lot of these vehicles are 400, 800 volts. This one's a little bit lower, but still, anything over 48 volts is considered high voltage and you can get a jolt. So this, these kind of safety features are gonna be huge. All right, hey, I like it. We're gonna go take a ride in this thing. So, <laughs> hey, we'll see you guys next time on Gassy Go With Snow. Thanks, guys.